I think it's recording. Hopefully it's recording in the right format. So that was disappointing. I had purchased this new camera, the Ordro, which is a head-mounted camera that you can wear like this. And my hope was that it would convey a better view of what I was experiencing with the panel. Unfortunately, the audio from this is terrible. I should have recorded with another device, the audio, and I should have had a backup video camera uh, because this decided to record in vertical view instead of uh, horizontal view, which is what I thought I had configured. And normally you press on the button and it tells you in the, in the little ear here that uh, which view you have, vertical or horizontal layout. Unfortunately, um, that wasn't too good and you basically really need to connect it to your phone so you can view with the settings and, and how it's recording, which I didn't do. So lesson learned and um, let's get back to the story. So I'm back in the airplane and I just started the engine and I'm here to basically troubleshoot the instrument cluster, which I had just spent uh, some time bench testing at home. It's quite easy to remove the instrument cluster from the panel. There's a disconnect that you twist and it pulls out pretty easily. Now this is a Weston brand instrument cluster, um, part 169 alpha, uh, if I remember rightly. Uh, we'll get a close up of that tag in a moment. And it's, as you can tell here, showing your fuel pressure, alternator load, amps, oil pressure, oil temp, and volts. And in particular, it was the oil pressure and fuel pressure that were giving me a problem. When I removed the, the uh, instrument cluster from the panel, it was uh, attached with four screws and there were nylon spacers, some of which were missing. So I was immediately suspicious that the spacers were designed to ground uh, or prevent the box from grounding to the panel. So that's what I was going to explore first is if the cluster actually functions. Another interesting thing here is you can see the date at which this was fabricated and also the quick connector at the rear of the box. So here you get to have a close look at the connector. It's a 10 pin connector and you can't see this very well with your naked eye, especially if you have nearsighted problems, but they're all um, lettered. And so I immediately started looking for a diagram. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one. So I used uh, ChatGPT actually, or was it Grok? I think I prefer Grok for technical things. And I started coming up with a plan of action for testing the various pins to verify uh, which instruments may be not working. So I followed Grok's instructions and the first thing we wanted to identify was if it grounded to the box, if it was external grounding that was designed to work that way, or if there was a particular pin that was supposed to be the common or ground uh, for the instrument. And it turns out that uh, alpha, the letter alpha, was the common ground. So after messing around with the ohm meter, uh, that's what we determined, Grok and I. So I have my ohm meter connected to the device and you can see it's recording some resistance, which is what you want. But I don't see any uh, movement on the instrument. So I changed the polarity and now you can see the oil pressure is uh, registering, which is what we want. So the oil pressure gauge does work. I then proceed to uh, test the other instruments while I have it on the bench uh, rather than having to, to go back and forth between the airplane. So here I'm testing the oil temperature and you can see that it uh, functions as uh, it's supposed to. So keep in mind that I am not an ANP, neither I am I, uh, an electrical uh, expert or engineer. I have no background. I'm a realtor and I am just blindly following the instructions of Grok on how to test uh, the uh, instrument cluster. It recommended a device that I use, which is a volt regulator, voltage regulator. So it's set to 14 volts and we have the amperage set all the way down. We don't want to fry this, um, you know, what is it? 60 year old uh, device. Um, and so as you can see, we do get life, signs of life when I'm testing it. And uh, that's what I was hoping for. So uh, it is behaving a little strangely, but ultimately we get the volt 
uh, part to work. So at this point, I see some behavior that I don't really understand, but uh, I ask for further explanation. I'm told, yeah, this could be normal. The other instruments could be reacting to the voltmeter. But uh, I did see the deflection of the voltmeter on this instrument cluster, so I was happy with that. That uh, this is a 60, 70 year old device and it needs replacing. So there are STCs uh, for um, engine monitors like the JPI 900 or the GI 275 from Garmin. And basically, I've already decided in my head I'm going to replace this. But I was happy to have achieved testing the oil pressure indicator and seeing that it, it can work. So in the airplane, I can see that the oil pressure is registering in the yellow. If you look uh, for a split second, you can see that. So I'm getting the instrument to work, but it's not really moving that much, that needle. So I'm suspicious that we still have a continued problem uh, with that instrument. So as I said before, I'll be replacing that. But as I was testing it in the airplane and I had reconnected the vacuum hose that the previous owner had disconnected, I'm noticing that the yoke is moving progressively to the right and I'm having to fight it in the airplane to keep the wings uh, or the ailerons level um, since we're on the ground. And it's progressively going further and further to the right. So I start troubleshooting the autopilot. I turn it off. I look at all the settings. I even pull the breaker at one point, and yet it's still uh, bringing the yoke over to the right. Ultimately, what I figure out is to use the autopilot disconnect switch on the yoke, which is on the left side. It's the middle switch, uh, if you get a chance to see it. And by doing that, then it releases the yoke and I'm able to move it freely. But the autopilot's not on. So that's kind of a crazy situation. So the autopilot disconnect switch releases the pressure from the system, uh, is independent from the actual autopilot itself. And here you can see I'm back to troubleshooting the uh, instrument cluster to see if we get any variation in that needle on the oil pressure. And uh, no, we don't. We see it like on the bench. It's no longer on zero, but now it's in the yellow. So it's, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Because we know we do have oil pressure because the engine's running and it doesn't have any leaks. But anyway, back to the autopilot issue. Um, it's disconnected, the breaker's off, and yet it's veering the plane to the right. And so this is extremely dangerous, um, and the previous owner had warned me about it, that if we connect the vacuum hose, that the plane wants to draw to the right. Nita's out, battery off, we're all good. <laughs> Mustang. A little bit of fuel on the ground. I don't think it's oil. There's oil inside the instrument. This is the pressure gauge. If there's no leaks. So what you saw was a pressure gauge that was installed by the previous owner because he wanted to make sure he was developing oil pressure. And indeed there, there is on that instrument, but uh, obviously that can't stay there. That needs to be removed. So uh, I go in to disconnect the uh, hose off the vacuum pump that goes into the vacuum system. So that's what I'm doing here. Vacuum hose disconnected. And now I need to get back into the airplane to now test to make sure that was the problem and that uh, the controls are no longer moving uh, all by themselves. They have similar, they're, they're basically the same engines, almost. All right, let's go back in here. Now we're gonna test with the vacuum system off. And so we should get vacuum alerts. And of course, this wasn't working anyway. So we'll see. Give it another try. Feet on the brakes. Battery on. Fuel pump. A little bit, we don't need much. There we 
go. Clear prop! Now the starter is giving me trouble. And you see when I do that, look what it does to the oil temperature. <laughs> uh, something's not right there. All right, let's let her cool down because that's what I did last time and it worked. Another problem I have is down here. If I turn on the battery, you'll see it immediately. You'll see that the fuel quantity on this one shows, but not on this one. So we're going to need to check that. Oil temperature be so hot. Clear for up. So I'll spare you the noisy environment, especially with this poor microphone on the camera. And as you can see, I've got the engine started again, turn on the alternator, and I can see that my instrument gauge is still giving me problems. So I go over to the left, I'm looking at the fuel flow indicator instrument, and that's no longer working, so that's going to need to go as well. And uh, But now I, I'm testing the yoke to make sure that I'm not getting any resistance. I did look it up a little bit, and it turns out that when you do have a leak in a Bretagne system, uh, it can pull you to the right or to the left, depending on which side the leak is. So basically, one servo stays pressurized, and the other pr servo loses pressure, and they uh, are naturally fighting. What amazes me is that this autopilot system cannot be disconnected, um, since uh, as long as it remains pressurized by the vacuum pump, uh, it will um, pull you to the right or to the left. So that's how you know when your Britain system has developed a leak. It starts doing uh, things like this. All right. So as you can see with this airplane, there's a lot of challenges. The autopilot obviously needs to be replaced. And I haven't found any STC for any autopilot, um, not the latest GFC 500 nor an older one. So if I want to replace that, then I need a field approval. Now, after doing a lot of research on this, field approvals are not easy. Um, it can take time. And I think there's going to be other issues, other things that will need uh, replacing, such as the very unique engine in the future. And that will be another field approval for, for that engine, if it's you know, possible at all. And, and all of that is big question marks around the timeline and the amount of work and cost of, of getting field approvals. So I feel like the most intelligent thing to do at this point in time is to transition to experimental status. And so that's what I intend to do. I intend to hire a DAR to help me through that process. So if there's any watching this, and if you can help, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to me. That's what I'm looking for next, is to go through changing the status of the airplane from a certified airplane to experimental exhibition. So I have the freedom to just pull the trigger on making improvements. And that way I'll stop messing around with these uh, outdated instruments and just go straight ahead to starting to work on installing um, something more modern. And uh, that will give me also a lot of freedom with avionics and to be able to also save money because avionics for experimentals are, is typically cheaper than the certified versions. So all in all, there's no real downside to this other than having to tell the FAA once a year where your intended flights are, are going when you're, when you're flying, which month and where to. Um, but as I said, this is going to be a show plane, an exhibition plane anyway, so that kind of makes sense altogether. So stay tuned, and uh, hopefully I'll have another video for you next weekend.